Okay, this one here is a rational function. Rational function just means it's a polynomial divided by another polynomial, as long as the polynomial on the bottom is not zero. And it's not in this case. Uh, the first step here would be probably to rewrite, to simplify this, and we can do that. x plus 3 doesn't simplify, but the bottom factors, because it's the difference of perfect squares, so x minus 2, x plus 2. Um, and because of that, nothing cancels here. That means that x cannot be 2 or negative 2. If it was, we would be dividing by 0, which is not good. So the domain restriction, the only part of this function that is not valid for the domain is that 2 and negative 2. So we write that as everything from negative infinity to negative 2 union, negative 2 to 2 union, 2 to infinity. And that would be the domain. The vertical asymptote is responsible, like the, the domain restriction results in a vertical asymptote, so simply they are at 2 and negative 2. Those will be vertical dotted lines on our graph. Uh, the x-intercepts, those occur when uh, y is equal to 0. So the simplest way to do this would be just to set the numerator equal to 0. If we set this numerator equal to 0 and solve for x, we'd see that there would be an x-intercept at negative 3. And a y-intercept will happen uh, when we plug in 0 for x. So if you plugged in 0 for x, yeah, you would just get y is equal to 0 plus 3 divided by 0 minus 4. That's negative 3 fourths. So there's a y-intercept at negative 3 fourths. Okay, the end behavior is something you can think about. If you were to plug in really humongous values for x, like really big, uh, you would see that you'd have... Let's just do one example, and then I'll show you something on Desmos. But if you wanted, like, what is a g of, like, a 1,000? That would be uh, 1,000 plus 3. So 1,003 divided by 1,000 squared is a million. Minus 4 is 999,996. And this is a number that comes pretty close to, like, I don't know, it's point zero 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 something. It's very small. Uh... And if this gets bigger and bigger, this is just going to get smaller and smaller. But it is positive. It's still, it's still a positive number divided by a positive number. Let me show you what happens if we plug in even bigger, uh, even bigger values. So I'm going to go to Desmos, and I have this function plugged in. And what I'm doing right here is I'm evaluating. I, I've got f, the f of x, that, the function that we're talking about, and then I'm evaluating f of a here, and I have different values in here for a. So... Uh, if I want to see, like, if I drag this value, if I plug in really, really big a values, you can see that the value of f of a, like the, what it, what it evaluates to, that's 7.14 times 10 to the negative 20. So it's a 7 with 20 zeros in front of it, or 19 zeros in front of it. Uh, so it's basically 0. And as we get even, co even smaller numbers, this becomes 1 to the negative Twenty, so it's one with nineteen zeros, and it's it's zero. If you plugged in also negative values, really small, really big negative values, so I'm gonna plug in. I don't even know how many zeros this is, but a lot. You see that it's negative, basically zero. So if you're plugging in really big numbers, that's what's happening here, and that's how you can make a statement about the end behavior. So the end behavior of this function, and in, in limit notation is that the limit of g of x, as x is be getting really, really, really big, positive, is 0. And the limit of g of x, as x is getting really big, negative, is also 0. However, I want to make one small change to this. And it's, this is not something you would do, but it, it shows you. Um, it, it shows that you know you were, you were thinking. If we plugged in negative really big numbers, we'd have 0, but it would be underneath the x-axis. So I'm going to put a little superscript negative sign there. And if I plugged in really big positive x values, I'd have 0 out for, for g of x, but it'd be positive 0. It's like just above the y-axis, uh, the x-axis. Um, so that will come in handy in a minute. Uh, we can't do much else here uh, before, before graphing this. So let's just transfer everything we've got onto the graph. Uh, we have asymptotes, put those in uh, orange, we have asymptotes at plus or minus 2, x, oops, x equals plus or minus 2, so we've got vertical lines here. Um, this is going to be a very difficult one for me to graph on this computer, 
especially if it keeps changing slides like that. I have totally disabled the options that tell it to change slides, and yet it still does. I didn't even touch anything there. That's cool. Uh, and then the end behavior, we can kind of draw in what we we can sort of call a horizontal asymptote, but it's not really it's not really an asymptote. Um, and so I'm gonna draw it along the x-axis. Uh, I did literally didn't touch anything. Okay, then uh, we can plug we can t we can put in the intercepts. So there was a x-intercept at negative three. There's a y-intercept at negative three-fourths, which is you know, somewhere about right there. And now we can draw in the stuff of this graph that we know. We know, according to this statement here, that we're going to have, way over here on this graph, we're going to have values really close to zero on the x-axis, but below it, below the x-axis. And we know that really far over here, really big x values, we're going to have y values that are basically zero but above the above the x-axis um, and that's pretty much it so let's look at a graph here uh, so I'm going to show you actually the graph of this on Desmos because it's just quicker uh, I'm going to keep the annotations and move to Desmos and I'm going to drag this over um, I'm going to zoom back to, so here's this graph uh, and I, I can type in those asymptotes so you can see what they look like. Uh, x is equals equals negative 2. Oh, that's not right. x equals just put 2. And x equals negative 2. Uh, so those are those asymptotes right there. They're not, well, we can change the way they look. Make them dotted and orange for, is that, yeah, orange. Okay, cool. Dotted. And I'll make this, make this purple. Or blue. I can't, even, I can't even see these colors. Okay, so, uh, now this is what the graph should look like. And we talked about this in class, but there's a minimum here. There's a little minimum where it dips below the x-axis. And there's this maximum here. So these two points are really important to know their values. Uh, so we can use this, we, we would use Desmos, or in your case, you would use a graphing calculator to get those two points and we'd put them back on our on our graph here. So let's do that. Uh, we had a little maximum. Oh, we had a little maximum at, uh, it was right about here. And, and then there was a little minimum, it was right about here. And the coordinates of those points. Well, let's just draw on the rest of the graph, actually. So go back to purple. Uh, we were over here. We came down, hit a minimum right there. Goes back, hits the x-axis there, and then goes, whoa, right up the as right up that asymptote there. And then this one, up the asymptote there. And hits a maximum there through the y-intercept, then down through that. And then this one here, it came from this way, and that goes up. Okay, so that's what the graph looks like, and we can draw in the, we put in these coordinates. Uh, this coordinate point was, this coordinate point was, I have it right here, negative 0.764, and this one was negative 0.655, and then and then the coordinates at this point here were negative 5.24 and negative 0 0.095. So if we need that information to answer the rest of these questions, and the way we do that is, uh, actually let's do the increasing, decreasing one first. So if we want to find when f of x is, um, is decreasing, we say, okay, it's decreasing because it starts near zero here, but then it's dropping until it gets to this minimum point right there. And so we've got to express that interval. And it's also decreasing when it gets to the top of this little hill here and then starts going down. So that area there is all decreasing. So we got to use an interval notation that would be uh, decreasing. Negative, sorry, got to change back to the pen. Uh, negative infinity to 
the negative 5.24. Computer's going super slow right now, so this is not going to be good. The union, the negative 0.764 to that the asymptote there of 2. So it's decreasing for that interval. It's increasing. Let's do the highlight that in a different color. So highlighter, let's do orange. So it'd be increasing from here to here. And then it would jump across the asymptote and be increasing from here to here. Um, oh, we forgot to do when it was decreasing on the right side. But it's, it's increasing in there. So it was also decreasing from here to here. Uh, so let's finish and correct that. Let me go back to pen. Red. Look at me doing it right the first time. Then it's decreasing from 2 to infinity also. That, uh, uh, there. Oh. there. Okay, and then it's increasing from the... Uh, this was a negative here, the negative 5.24. I can't see what I'm writing, so this might be really bad handwriting. Oh, well, there you go. Thanks, TUSD. Increasing from there uh, to the first asymptote, that's at negative 2. And then not including the negative 2, because it's, it's an asymptote. It's neither increasing nor decreasing there. Thanks, TUSD. Uh, from negative 2 then to the maximum, the x coordinate of that maximum, which is negative 0.764. Uh, I'm not even going to do when it's increasing because uh, the computer's not behaving. Uh, but you would use interval notation to express where it's increasing. It would be increasing, I'll show you with a highlighter, a green highlighter. I mean, where it's greater than zero, it's greater than zero here and here. Oh, that's delete. Cool. I just totally ruined the graph. Uh, but it would have been increasing from. Well, it was, I mean, where is it was, it was greater than zero. From, it was all that area and then all this area here. Uh, and then it was, it would have been negative or less than zero for everything up until there and then all this stuff here. And then we'd use interval notation to write that, but I'm losing my patience, so I'm not going to do that.